Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Genre of Your Life podcast, a show all about movies, TV, and why we love entertainment. This is episode number 16, I believe. Uh, I am one of your hosts, uh, Doug Jones, one of the creators and producers of the Genre of Your Life. With me, as always, is my esteemed colleague and great co-host and co-creator of the show, Mr. Joel Kindlin. How are you, sir? I am good, sir. I'm good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you, my guy. Yes, yes, yes. A celebrational day. I never forget to celebrate. <laughs> if um, you saw oh, my yeah. Instagram, you would have seen uh, my memory post. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I still, I mean, before I mean, I know, before we do the housekeeping, I, I, I still have a good memory of just opening night Star Wars Episode 7 with you guys in, you know, 2015. Oh, yeah. That was just, that was a fun day. Just like, we were so hyped. Like, we're like, I remember me and Sebastian, like, we did school early. It was like, it was the day before final week, uh, before, uh, you know, like winter break. And it was like seeing you and seeing TJ. Like, I remember we like booked tickets in advance, like weeks before, and it was already sold out. I was like, oh, this is going to be crazy. And it just the uh, anticipation of it all was, I don't know, I was looking forward to that. But I have a good memory of you guys, man. And I just like, opening night, I just, that, if you want to see a Star Wars movie, I mean, I know the last few have kind of just disappointed, but the best way is to see opening night with a big crowd because the energy is very unmatched. Oh, yeah. I remember after the movies, we got out and Sebastian was like, I'm going to use, I'm going to. I'm a scream a spoiler. Well, we're like, oh, we're no. like, we're like, don't do that, don't do that. And then what he scream? He didn't scream a spoiler, but he was like no, messing said, with people. No, he he he. I think he did. No, no. I think he goes. No, uh, he he R2 said. R two D two died. <laughs> yeah, R two D two died. There he goes. <laughs> as, as people were passing, we we're like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. that. A... Don't don't break people's hearts <laughs> like that. Like I would be like. <laughs> <laughs> It's that, uh, Simpsons, the, is that uh, is it? Simpsons episode, remember? The, the episode where Homer goes, he walks out of episode five, he goes, wow, I can't believe Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. Everyone goes, oh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just, like, out loud. Um, again, hello, everybody. Welcome to the show, or welcome back to the show if you're returning with us. Um, as always, you can find the show on your favorite podcast platform of choice, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or Google Podcasts, you find the show on there. If you want to follow the show on social media, you can find us at, at Midway Avenue Productions on Instagram, as well as TikTok. Uh, trying to grow the TikTok a lot more. Uh, we have a lot of summer movies coming up, so we do a lot more reviews and out-of-theater reactions, definitely. Um, go find us on LinkedIn. Go follow us on LinkedIn, our kind of like our very fancy, spanchy uh, professional career page. We're also on LinkedIn.com backslash Midway Avenue Productions, so give us a follow there. And as always, if you can rate Follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Give us a rating. Give us a, a review. It helps the show out tremendously. And as always, we thank you so much for your support and hope you enjoy the show as much as we do. All right, my guy. Like I said, man, May the 4th. May the 4th. We are now in May. You're, you're going by fast. And as always, yes, man, sir. it is the day to celebrate and worship, not worship, but cherish the legacy that is Star Wars and the Star Wars franchise. Yes, and sir. And before we get into that, uh, I want to bring up something that's very important to all Star Wars fans. And if you just love, like, you know, the industry as well. Um, Carrie Fisher just recently yes. got her star on the walk. Overdue. A way overdue, way overdue, which was very emotional, especially for Harrison Ford. And I'm sure Mark Hamill. I didn't see him talking. Uh, Mark Hamill's there. there. Mark Hamill's there. Okay, great. And, and her daughter. Yep. Yeah, her daughter, and they're all there, and they're very, you know, reminiscent. You could tell the pain for them, uh, and you know, because they were all really good friends for such a long yeah. time. Because they did so many, so many of the movies together, and then you know, with the characters like that, they had such a great chemistry. And you know they 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 helped each other through a lot of hard times. I'm sure. Um, oh, dude, huge! Yeah, and what was the cute thing was I'm pretty sure her daughter threw glitter on her star for her. I saw that, great. and she yeah. wore a dress with her mother's with uh, mother's face on it, and it was very oh, yeah. 
I didn't watch the video or the speeches yet, but it looks like a very beautiful moment of that. Her daughter was there. She spoke. She, she accepted the award, and Mark Hamill was there. And it's kind of crazy that, like, that is so long overdue. I mean, she is such an icon. I mean, she, I mean, Princess Leia is such an iconic character for so many generations. And it's surprising well, you, that, you like... you got to think about it like this. The problem with it is that there's a lot of celebrities that are past overdue that have not gotten things mm-hmm. such as, you know, uh, you know, Graham, not Grammys, that's music. Um, well, what's the award? That, Oscars. Uh, Oscars. Yeah. Like Oscars stars as well. And the issue with the stars is that they wait until like a lot, quite a lot of them die first before they get their star. Yeah, and there's some like that get them for like no reason. Like, no offense, saying the Sesame Street characters, but I'm like, come on now, you, you y'all didn't earn that. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, the actor, man, I'm sorry, actor, I'm the actor, s- but not the well, character. yeah, the character, yeah, but like, you know, Sesame Street has been here for so long, and you know, they wanted to. That's from. I feel like that's more of a tourist attraction type thing. You know, oh, huge. little kids be like, you know, because the kids are gonna be looking at the stars too, and they're not gonna know who the fuck you know the parents would be and like oh my god you know so they'll probably see like big bird and now mom be like oh my god <laughs> they're telling me the sweet the, the sweetest chef got one before carrie fisher fisher come on now <laughs> oh damn <laughs> that man got bars but like come on now they're the smorgasbord man i was like come on man but what any, but either way it's very i i i respect again i'm very happy that the hollywood and the hollywood board of chambers Really gave her the small. Really gave her, um, uh, you know, a post, you know, career, uh, uh legacy, a walk of fame. Again, again, she really. Uh, it was kind of crazy too. I remember like my mom getting the her her autobiography like the week she passed away, and my mom was reading it, and she was like, "This is really weird reading the reading the autobiography because it was remember it was, it was December, it was Christmas twenty sixteen, like mm-hmm. Rogue One just came out. We were a year removed from Force Awakens. Uh, Last that was being filmed." And I remember my mom was reading the autobiography, and she was like, "Yeah, she just passed away," and it was just, it was very eerie for her. But I also remember that same time, her then Carrie Fisher's mom passed away like two days later, and that was so bizarre because I'm like, "Wow, your you, your daughter just let you see your daughter unfortunately you know leave this earth, and then you're in there, and then she passed away, and it was a very bizarre week of like it was Christmas time, her book just came out, she did a huge book tour, but." It's sad because I think she really had a lot, lot more to like offer. But I'm glad her daughter's kind of living, um, you know, through her mother's legacy as well as becoming an actor herself. And yeah, and I'm glad that Mark Hamill was there. Her friends were there. Uh, yeah, daughter was there because like, it's a very uh, special moment. Think about Robin Williams, Zelda Williams. Dude, oh yeah, she became yeah. an actor. I don't, I haven't seen her in anything recently, but she, you know, she did act in quite a few things, such as you know, Team Wolf and everything like that. Oh yeah, dude. So yeah, so yeah, it's uh, it's. It's a very. I'm very. I'm very happy that they. She has a walk. She's a star because again, she really is just an like, iconic actress, but also just an iconic character. I mean, Princess Leia really is like kind of the archetype for just so many like, uh, just really you know powerful and very really important female characters that you know that come and that she inspired. So uh, again, yes. props to the Highwood Board Chambers for and doing a so. lot of it's young good. boys. This masturbation for, icon for quite a while. I, I say that. <laughs> I didn't say they that. talked about it on things. They I know she did on Graham Norton. Yeah, no, she. I don't remember. Yeah, I remember she did. I wish she was I like that's she so did. crazy. This or that. <laughs> that's all I just yeah. wanted to do. That and, she, and, and she honestly, she really, she really, she really, uh, uh, she really just kind of just like just said it. Said it, you know she like owned that shit because you know it, it, that's how it was. A lot of young boys were. That was like their first. That was like their first crush. But anyways, I'm very happy that she uh, yeah. got her star, man. Got her flowers, man, because she really is an icon. So anyway, yeah. man. Yeah, man. So Star Wars Day, bro. Star Wars Day is here. And I know that yes, sir. you, you and I really like. We've seen a lot of eye to eye. I, I think you appreciate more of the shows than I do. I mean, I think Mandalorian is still probably the best Sadly. Disney. That I because y'all are fucking dropping the ball. Those shows are fire, my guy. Those shows pop off. <laughs> like I, re- uh, <laughs> I really did. I really do like Mandalorian. I I couldn't finish, but excuse me, Boba Fett. And I and I know you. I think you appreciated Obi Wan more than I did. To, I, mean, I love seeing um, uh, you and McGregor. Like Obi-Wan, yeah. It just to me. It to me, what I heard from the writers too was that since Solo, I mean, we, we, we'll get into this later. But since when Solo flopped, 
they they had to rewrite a lot of stuff because they were like, it's not a movie anymore. Which, I mean, I get it. I think the, the the narrative format of the TV show was definitely a better route for sure. But again, mm-hmm. like, we, like we mentioned in the previous episodes, I'm not a fan of Kathleen Kennedy. And she really has a thing of like, I don't, she goes, uh, oh, um, I don't, I don't like that. It's gone. It's like, you got to let these creators create. And I do think you let, you're letting Dave Filoni and John Favreau take, take the ship. And also, um, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, Rick Fumiwaya, as well as Bryce Dallas Howard. They're really good filmmakers. And I think she trusts them, but she's not giving a lot of other people kind of a fair chance. And, you know, we, we just had a Star Wars celebration a few weeks ago. And I, I didn't mention on the show a few weeks ago, but I wanted to mention this was that she announced so many new movies and shows. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, none of these will ever happen because she cancels everything. <laughs> she cancels everything. And I'm like, and everyone I listen to, like, whether on YouTube reviews or other podcasts, they were all saying, like, we can't get, we can't get really get hyped for these movies because knowing Kathleen Kennedy, she cancels everything. She does. She's in like, oh, you made the character one way, canceled. Oh, this way, canceled. She really has no, like, she has no kind of, like, patience for anything, which kind of sucks. At the same time, she really does not, like, anything that her, her way, she cancels it. So it's it kind of sucks as fans that we have not seen a Star Wars movie in almost now five years. I mean, since um, uh, Rise, uh, Rise of Skywalker or whatever. So she really mm-hmm. does not like anyone kind of, like, taking a risk. And it kind of sucks because I feel like you and I both know that how Star Wars can be if they got away from the Skywalker Skywalker, um, you know, storyline as well as kind of like not the prequels, but like it, you have an original idea, they can do so much with it. But I just I right. don't trust Kathleen Kennedy enough because whenever she announces a bunch of new movies, a bunch of shows, like she had so many cool people on board for remote shows and movies, canceled. And it's like, well, that sucks because it's like really kind of like unfortunate because you want to see these people do original stuff within the universe. I don't know, man, how do you mm-hmm. feel about right now the Star Wars like? how it is right now and like this it's kind of like the status of like what they've been putting out on disney plus are and you know are you talking come. about the live action shows and everything oh anything um, I mean, how you feel right now start in general okay uh let's see with john favreau and dave filoni the only reason that star wars they're the really the only reason that star wars is surviving and oh, that's yeah. not excluding the writers and everything you know with the other cast what i'm talking about is that their their visions has directors and you know producers are um have been you know making a lot of things come to life which is always mm-hmm. great always happy to see it you know um because you <laughs> sorry uh uh so you know they 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 and they've uh, added a lot of the lore. So that's always so great with the with the shows that they add a lot of lore, and then they call and they add like callbacks from even the animated show, and they keep things like real true to how the lore really is. So a lot of the canon things they stick to it, even because you know the anime shows are you know real. So you know the yeah. anime shows do have that history, the animation, yeah, you know, the uh, oh, lore sure. and everything. So they add that into your show, such as Mandalorian, uh, which is always great. Um, I feel like a lot of people are very tough on the shows. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, because you know they're not getting what they want like if you go to youtube and look up fucking uh star wars fan theories or anything like that there's a a huge amount of just constantly changing theories yeah so i feel like a lot of the a lot of the fandom which I personally have issues with already is that they're they're so tough on it you know what i mean Huge. like remember when solo came out me you like when all of our homies loved it because we do love star wars like we stay up to date we love the lore we we pay attention it's not just like oh it's a dope movie action woo you know like we know what the fuck we're watching we know what we're talking about so the things that they add to it were great and like most of the hate is one, the, they say the movie is unnecessary. Two, they didn't like the guy that played uh, Han Solo. They wanted 
Harrison Ford to be CGI Young, which doesn't make mm-hmm. sense, you know. But other than that, there's no real reason for them to hate on it, you know. Like that's all I ever see is it was unnecessary. I was like, all right, like you guys are talking about, uh, uh, you guys are talking about Han Solo movie being unnecessary, but then Rogue One, where the movie is just about how we got the plans for the Death Star by the way, is not unnecessary. No hate to the cast, no hate to anything, but you're calling a a Solo movie about how he came to be Han Solo, his adventure of how he met met Chewbacca and everything. That was unnecessary. But Rogue (laughs) One, the movie all about getting the plans for the Death Star, was not... That doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? Like, they love that movie. They dick ride the Andor character when I truly have no care for him. You know what I mean? Like, they're dude, any t- they're milking it. You know, I'm not talking about production. I'm talking about fans. They have sucked. They, they have swallowed that man's penis. I'm not, no offense to the actor or anything. I just have no He's care for that character. He is a good actor. He's really good. He did really well. Just overall, just have no care for the character. But you know what I mean? Like, Rogue One, they love that movie. People still talk about the movie. They're like, oh my god, so amazing. It's like one of the top... That's like people's top three movies for Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. You know? I don't... Yeah, it's it's But for a lot of other things, they give hate. So, like, season three of The Mandalorian came out. They hated it. They hated it, and that that stems from you know the the one the one season of uh, what's his name? Andor. No. Uh, oh, Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. Boba Fett. Which a, a lot of them, uh, which they, they, that got a lot of hate, which is understandable. It wasn't a really good show because of all the of how PG'd it was. <laughs> yeah. It was way too PG. I think that's where that failure came from. You know what I mean? It's Boba Fett. PG. You want to see him as a hunter and everything. And so, you know, he's older and Disney owns Star Wars. We can't get the Boba Fett we wanted. So, you know, boom, we had that season. And then finally, season three of Mandalore. Mandalorian came out and a lot of people were hating on it with, like, and that also stems from the fan theory. It's like I said, like a lot of like constant every episode, people are like, "This is my theory for, you know, blah 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 blah," and it just didn't go the way that they wanted. And I feel like they hated it, <laughs> you know. When the so- oh, overall yeah. story for the Mandalorian was really good to see Mandalorians in action together and to strive to get to have a singular goal and it's just really interesting how everything played out i really did love the season three of mandalorian i thought it was really well and also unwarranted hate for lizzo and jack black because their characters were in one episode congratulations that's called a filler fucking get over it you know what i mean and also just overall like they 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 weren't on screen for long they played over eccentric characters. That was it. And then that was the only episode. They had no importance to the show. Get over it. There's yeah. a lot of people in shows nowadays that have backing for a lot of things. You know what I mean? Like, where the characters are important, yet you don't see hate, but with Star Wars, there's so much hate, and a lot of these actors and characters get a lot of hate, you know, the same with the kid, the, I won't call him kid, because he's older than us, the guy who played Han Solo, you know, in the Solo oh, movie, yeah. the actor who did Jar Jar Binks, uh, what's that? Hayden Christensen, Hayden Christensen, uh, the kid who played young, you know, Anakin Skywalker, like, he got oh, a shit yeah. ton of hate. Like, you gotta focus on not letting the fandom warp your opinion because our the fandom is toxic. The fandom is horrible. We have shown hate again and again and again. And, like, 
you know, growing up, I followed that. Not like be like, oh, like fuck these character, you know, people, but like, you know, like the 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 prequel movies with Hank and Obi Wan. I I didn't like. I was like, oh, those are bad. In reality, I watch them again. I was like, they're fine. I actually truly enjoy them. You know what I mean? And people give like driver beings but these actors are getting a lot of love but at the same time the new actors and new characters are getting a lot of hate you know what i mean mm-hmm. it, it, it's a sort of just like oh we take back what we said because you know blah, blah, blah. like dude like who fuck cares like just don't let it just don't let the fandom affect what, how you see star wars i say you guys instead of listening to star wars people actually give things a watch thoroughly of your own of your own view uh, un, what's it called? Un, biased, but yes, unbiased, and just watch it as a fan and see how much work these characters put into it. Because if you watch the the prequels, like with you know, Hayden Christensen, like their star, like their lightsaber battles are a lot better than you know the new movie star, you know, lightsaber battles. We get a few swings and that's it. You know what I mean? No offense mm-hmm. to Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley. Like, like I had no issues with the actors in the new movies. I had issues with the writing, and I'll say that mm-hmm. as their characters were fucking massacred. You know? Huge. So, Huge, man. As I go over the shows, and I go over the things I love about this, and you have a biased opinion, just know I don't give a fuck. Stick it up your ass and around the corner. Okay? Because this is my views of how I see Star Wars, and the shows are really good. The, The movies are really good. Stop hating just to hate. Stop hating characters because other people hate those characters. You're ruining people's careers and you're actually doing a lot of harm. Like me and you have talked about in the past, the actor who did Jar Jar Binks almost killed himself and he has a kid and he has all this. And it's like, dude, like y'all really don't care. Like y'all really don't think. No. Yeah. It's very toxic. And that's why like, you know, you can say all this stuff on Twitter and when it comes to it, your ear is just like, yeah, you just you wouldn't say this to people's faces, and it's like people feel comfortable that they can say it on like Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and it's like, oh, and it's it's very toxic, and it's sad because you know it's we should be celebrating the franchise that really kind of like like the original franchise. Like I feel like Star Wars was Star Wars kind of like the original franchise of like. The big blockbusters that kind of just like has been gone on for what now forty almost forty yeah forty five years now which is like oh yeah forty five mm. years which is crazy man so for me a little more than that I know they celebrated the fourth anniversary of um uh, Return of the Jedi last week I know you, you showed me that video like oh coming back to theaters it's Return of the Jedi which is really cool I'm I'm bummed that we couldn't go see that because that yeah. would be a cool experience um but at the same time it's uh yeah it's I you know it's I think. There's a lot of room to grow and improve with the franchise. Um, I do think to this yes. day they um, they really did get they kind of they they well, they did a lot of things dirty in the new in the sequel trilogy, but they really did not give John Boyega who plays Finn a fair chance because he had so much like really cool oh, stuff yeah. in the first movie. He, he, Force he Awakens, one, dude, like here's the one thing I do agree with the fandom on is that they killed John Boyega's character who was supposed to be a Jedi as well. Yeah. And he was supposed to have such a bigger role in yeah. this. And also Daisy Ridley's character got destroyed in the making because they wanted her to have they the, the, the romance. The, the the they wanted her to have the romance, which was unnecessary. No one wanted, no one was like, oh my God, you know what Lou Skywalker was missing? Romance. Like, no one did that, you know, but they wanted to follow his footsteps and they wanted to do the weird romance. And then I know in almost everyone's head, they're like, they're supposed to be cousins. This is weird. <laughs> you know, I, they, yeah, because, I that gay, because everyone's just like, you know, because when she had the flashes of the past. You 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 saw a robotic, you know, even though it was glove. R two D two was there, you know what I mean? 
when she when she yeah when she it was it, hard to explain this but basically <laughs> that was supposed to be luke skywalker's daughter you know what i mean or, or whatever and they took that away so a lot of these characters got over just dumbed they killed off snoke because let's be honest it Way wasn't too easily to palpatine it was not and now we have this whole cloning palpatine thing um, how palpatine returned that's, that's so bad dialogue dude and i love <laughs> jj but come on man like jj really it got wasn't fun even that jj's dialogue. fault because that was what well yeah no they did yeah he, um, he was palpatine the one that returned that. Oh, yeah, but he, he had to do damage control i he really did. don't find he he got no it wasn't his fault with what came Episode eight destroyed it all. Episode eight destroyed it because episode seven was just a t- quick, like a little interesting introduction, you know. And then things were supposed to get better with eight, with a new writer understanding what JJ laid out and to see what he could have done. But because of the fandom and production, Ryan Johnson massacred it. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't, and it sucks too. But I feel like you and I both have on the show multiple times, and even in our personal lives, that The Force Awakens really is a fantastic reboot slash sequel. To I mean, I know the comparisons of it's basically a New Hope all over again. Yes, it is very similar to a New Hope in many different ways. But at the same this time, this is just a tiny introduction. Exactly, it was. It did the job of bringing back Star Wars after a what 10 year hiatus and remember those prequels were 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 so unfavored i mean everyone hated those prequels those prequels so much to a point where it was like well star wars is done so jj really and also again this time that it, i still give jj jj credit he he's the only guy that has ever done two star trek movies and two star wars and he both rebooted both star trek great and he rebooted Star Wars pretty great. So I give the man credit for both of that. And I know we're both J.J. Abrams fans. Um, I, I just, I do, I, I know that definitely the idea of like what what Finn could have been. That, it's a perfect storyline of like a stormtrooper turned Jedi. That would, that is a perfect, really cool setup or a story. And, you know, I see a lot on TikTok and Instagram, whatever. And it's very like the idea of like, Oh yeah, it's very. We were, we were robbed of a great story that like we had never seen before of like a stormtrooper turned Jedi, and I think we all kind of we all kind of we were all kind of like deserving of that great storyline. And like you said too, Ryan Johnson, a great filmmaker, he wasn't ready for Star Wars. And I mentioned this on the podcast a few episodes ago that Ryan Johnson, the great storyteller, when he's doing original stuff, when he's doing franchise stuff, I don't think he was the right person to do it, mm-hmm. do franchise stuff. And like you said. Force uh, episode nine is damage control because they they fired the original directors, the original director and writer, and yeah. they brought back AJ, which again, like you said, damage control. It's like, oh, was was just play it safe, and they brought in Chris Terrio, the co-writer. And I'm not gonna lie, Chris Terrio won an, won an Oscar for Argo, but I do think that a lot of that script was rewritten by someone else. That's my theory. And Chris Terrio wrote BVS and Justice League. And again, I'm not blaming him for the writing, but Chris Terrio was like, I've seen interviews with the guy. I've seen like, I've seen an interview with Chris Terrio as a writer, and mm-hmm. to me, Chris Terrio to me is, I don't, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is that he just why is he inter- interviewed with him? He just to me he seems very just like pretentious, and he's very like, oh well, in, in my storyline I do this and that. I saw I saw an interview with him. He wrote you know he wrote yeah BVS and uh, Justice League. I see interviews with him. He's very pretentious, and he's very of like. Well, in this storyline, like he's kind of talking down to you, and I'm like, oh, JJ, you, out of all the people to co-write this with, you picked him, and people praise him again. He has an Oscar. I know he's an Oscar for Argo, and I love Argo, but I truly mm-hmm. think Ben Affleck rewrote that script. Again, it's not confirmed. Don't at me, but I'm like, you see a lot of his work, and I'm like, dude, this guy, this Terrio guy, really to me, really has no kind of like appreciation for these, for these. These franchises, and I get it. You, you want it. You have Snyder doing his thing. You got JJ doing his thing. And I've seen things that Terrio has written, and I'm like, dude, you are not the guy. And again, I can't, th- I can't say shit because like, he's an Oscar and he is a he's a full on writer in this industry. Mm. Props to him. But I'm like, dude, you really don't understand these characters, and it shows. And right. I do think Snyder was the main writer of uh does this leak his version of it and i think bvs you i mean i'm like dude yeah this chris terrio guy really does not know what he's doing so 
I just don't like him as a writer. And when I see him in interviews, I'm like, dude, you're kind of like a, you're kind of a dickhead. So again, I don't know the guy personally, but the vibe I get from him when I watch interviews and I hear him talk on podcasts, I'm like, oof, like he, he just, you just don't understand these characters. And I feel like it's kind of like, oh, if you don't get it, then too bad. And it's like, well, that's kind of unfair because we want, we want to understand these characters. We want to understand your vision. I, I love hearing like writers like you know Edgar Wright or like with CT or. Uh, Ryan Coogler, where they talk about, yeah, the writing process was this. We we had a whole mm-hmm. I established this, this, and that. You know, I love hearing that kind of like that kind of like yeah, like they're kind of like the thought process or Denis Villeneuve or Christopher Nolan. Like I want or Jordan Peele, especially. I want to hear their thought process, and I love when they kind of break down like yeah, my process for writing the script was this idea, blah 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 blah. And when I, when I hear writers or directors kind of like, oh well, my vision, you just didn't get it, or da, 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 da. it's like yeah, but you're kind of coming out, you're coming, you're coming off as a douche. And right. I, it, it's very like I don't want to watch more of your work. Then if you're if you're gonna talk like this, and if if you're gonna talk down to your audience, then what's the yeah. point? This is, like this if, is a lecture. if the audience didn't see your vision, that's understandable because everyone has their own view of things. Right. How about you break down why you wrote it, how you wrote it, and what you meant it to be for you to as a writer to be like, well, you didn't understand and then not, like, go into it and why I didn't understand. It's like, mm-hmm. when... It's like, okay, everyone had this teacher, right? And me and you had these. We always talked about these teachers. Hated them, right? Because we would have these teachers that would go over something, you'd raise your hand and be like, I don't understand mm-hmm. it. Well, all too bad. You try to keep <laughs> yeah, up. Literally. You're right teacher you know what i mean as a writer when you do these interviews and people are telling you i don't really understand the character i don't really understand what you tried doing with this film and other stuff like that if you don't explain it people aren't gonna understand it that means that you are leaving it up to other people's interpretation yeah dude i don't get mad at them for being wrong because you decide to leave it like that yeah thank you joe exactly you said it spot on on money man because I just, you can't get mad, and it's, well, again, you wrote the script, and I remember when when JJ was brought back on, I remember you and I, you know, I texted, you know, I talked about this, you know, years ago, and I was, oh, cool, he's coming back, I'm like, who's his co-writer? Chris Terrio, again, this is before the Snyder Cut came out, and this is, like, right after, this is, right after Justice League, this is, like, at their BVS, and I said, oof, like, yeah, he wrote Argo and stuff, but I'm like, what does he know about these characters? And again, like I said, it shows in episode 9, like you said, it's damn control for sure. I don't, I think with, you know, with episode seven, Force Awakens, you know, similar to Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau, the writers that were brought on for Force Awakens, they knew these characters. And it was yeah. Abrams and it was Lawrence, Kas- Lawrence Kasdan who wrote, um, who was written Indiana Jones. He's written um, Empire Strikes Back, which is the best Star Wars movie, you ask me. So oh, cool. And they also have a good writer. Um, oh my gosh. He wrote a lot of good movies too. I'm trying to think of his name. It's uh, Michael. Oh man. It's, he, wrote, he wrote Catching Fire, which is the best uh, Hunger Games movie. Michael Arndt, who wrote, he wrote Star Wars Force Awakens. He wrote Hunger Games, Catching Fire, which is the best one. And he wrote Toy Story 3 and a lot of other good stuff. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a great resume of stuff. And I'm like, cool. You have two great writers on board with JJ. Cool. This is a great thing. And then with, with mm-hmm. um, Last Jedi, you had Ryan Johnson writing Solo. And I don't think, I don't, th- well, yeah, George Lucas did, I guess. George Lucas wrote things on his own too. But I think, I think where Ryan Johnson failed, similar to George Lucas in the prequels, is that they were so caught up in their own, like, this is how I see it. If you don't, if you, if you don't like it, you don't like it. It is what it is. And like you said, Joe, it's that caused so much, like, it definitely took away from the franchise. And I remember hearing an interview with again. I love Ryan Johnson. I think I love and I love Knives Out. I love Looper. I love a lot of things he does. And I, but I do remember like I remember an interview where like someone asked him a question and he goes, "Oh, your Snoke theory sucks." And I was like, "What?" And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, dude, wait, hold up now. And it's, I think, like I said, he suffered where George Lucas suffered from too. Is that they were so caught up in their own like like vision of this of this of this world that oh if you don't like it oh too bad and again you're, right. you're the filmmaker you're the filmmaker you have you are the captain of the ship you can do whatever you want but to me mm. i feel like you may feel the same way it's very off-putting because i don't want to see a filmmaker say well this is my vision duh, 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 kiss my ass and i'm like yeah and i do think ryan johnson again i said this before in the other podcast i said a few months ago ryan johnson was not the guy to get for episode eight 
I think they should go no. with someone more experienced. Because more we we talk about it, you know, has has Star Wars fans <laughs> and not just movie lovers, is that for episode seven, right, when uh when Kylo was talking to Snoke across a galaxy, this man force grabbed him, dragged him yeah. all around the floor, but died. Was by the way talking about knowing Kylo, understanding him being yeah. in his head, and then getting chopped in fucking half, and that's it. Was ridiculous. <laughs> you know, it's too it was easy. ridiculous. It was it's way too, too easy. easy. Like the biggest, baddest dude in the galaxy currently, who can force grab someone from across the galaxy that Yoda can't even do. Got they killed. could have, they could have done so much more with Snoke, and you and you have Andy fucking Circus, dude. Andy fucking Circus, who is a phenomenal actor. I mean, the motion capture he's done in the past is 30, 20 years, 20, 30 years is amazing with Gollum and Caesar from Planet of the Apes. Let's also talk about how he can still, to this day, transition from character to character to character without a break. By the way. Because I, you, if you watch his, his it with his interviews, he's went from Gollum to other characters that we know and love, and come on now, like you killed off this character, this character that could have been huge for him, what a way waste. bigger, so huge, who would have been a powerful Sith to had. Instead, we had to get rid of him, and we had Cry Baby Kylo uh, talking about trying to romance. <laughs> I'll tell you. His I'll cousin. tell you what too. I'll, t- I'll tell you what too. I've seen a lot of interviews. I had a lot of podcasts with Andy Circus. Shout out to him. I, th- I think he's one of the nicest people in the entire world. I have heard oh, yeah. people I've worked with people I, I talked to in the industry that I worked with him, and I have people that I hear listen to podcasts with. He seems like one of the nicest people in the entire world. I've heard nothing but great things about him. And you can tell he's the biggest smile on his face when he's doing these different characters and talking about it because he's so passionate. And everyone mm-hmm. like watching an interview because he, he did Venom too. He, did, he, he directed Venom too as well. And I loved, and I love hearing how like, oh, I want to do this really badly. This, this direct, you know, directing this thing. So I, I love doing motion, ca- motion capture and you know different creatures. He seems like one of the nicest people in the world, and I think he's a very, very underrated actor and filmmaker. So I think he does. He, I think he brings so much like originality and bring so much you know emotion and just like you know vulnerability to his roles and his performances so i i want to shout him out real quick because i think he's just a great great actor and to me he's something like a great dude to like just like hang out and talk to so any circus if you listen to this if you listen to the long shot i know thank you for what you do <laughs> man because you really do a lot of great things that i think is yes. very inspiring to us young filmmakers and just like you just you seem very happy but you seem very genuinely you know seem like all oh, your hollywood you know kind of like oh look at me i'm a star i'm a i know these franchises you seem very very genuine i love seeing that like you're a good dude so to you mr any circus thank you for what you do a quick little shout out to we you we <laughs> are giant andy circus fans and huge love, fans uh, lovers here because of just the immense passion that andy circus has for his craft and to continuously refine it and just show Huge. it in different ways and just do such amazing job with it. whether it's in a video game movie or whatever he does, he, he does it wholeheartedly and you can see it Huge. Him. And, and it's just so amazing. So definitely love Andy Circus, man. He, he does such a great job. Doing huge, man. Um, no, so yeah, let's get what? Let's... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. You go. <laughs> I go, no, no. I was, I was gonna say like let's get into it. So let's do. I want to do like. I think we should do our top five favorite Star Wars projects and why you pick these top five. I'll let you go first. Go, but I know you really. I think you have a better understanding of the shows more than I do, including you know, um, including okay. Rebels and including talking, Clone Wars. Are we talking about shows only? Or are we talking top five projects like in general? Could be shows, animation, movies, anything. Okay, number five. Mm. That's shame. That's hard to do, man. Holy shit. Movies and TV shows? Fuck my life. <laughs> I watch way too much to where it's like, dude, I gotta go through a fucking archive right now and just fucking, yeah, you know I mean, hacker yeah. eyes and shit. 
Oh, God, dude. I never put this shit. I never really do, like, top five stuff. You know me. It's always very hard. You on the spot, dog. I watch so <laughs> much, and I do. Oh, fuck. Okay, hold on. Let me think. Um, fuck five. Okay. Uh, it's going to be Star Wars Rebels. Mm-hmm. That is an uh, anime show on the Disney Plus. Um, that is a good show. So what it is, right? It shows. Uh, <clears throat> so what it is is um, basically it shows a small team uh, after they find a force sensitive kid who lost his who doesn't know where his parents are I haven't seen them in quite some time and uh it turns out that one of the people one of the leaders in the group is uh is a uh, is a jedi who survived order uh 66 uh has a uh youngling you know not has a padawan he, who was a padawan whose master sacrificed herself for him and he got away from the troopers and survived and now he's an adult and you know it, it, throughout the show they just sort of show more things it's very kiddish obviously because it is a cartoon in a way but if you just pay attention to the lore and everything it really does show everything and it reintroduces Darth Maul <laughs> later on in the show. Okay, but it's, it's such a great show I loved it so much um uh, and it just goes over quite a few things. So, yes, that is definitely number five for me. Um, <sighs> shit, shit, shit. I guess... Oh, my God. There's so much to go over. <laughs> uh, fuck. Okay. Uh, number four will be Bad Batch. Um, that is, uh, is a Star Wars show, two seasons so far, where they talk about, um, they go over this, uh, team of clone troopers who are different from other clone troopers. Uh, in the science's form, you know, they are the defective ones because all clone troopers have the same traits, but with these clone troopers, something within them has given them more traits over others. And so they're a squadron. And when order 66 happened, it didn't affect them. And so they defected from the, uh, from the empire and just sort of just started doing their own thing. So it shows what happens right after order 66. It's really dope. So that's number four. <sighs> man, you're, you're... Fuck my life, man. Oh, Making you work, man. Because <laughs> I got to think about this. Truly. I, go, I, I, yeah. I can do five and four if and you want. And for anyone fucking remember, uh, is trying to fucking think about a certain thing, uh, what's not in my top five is Rogue One. I could fucking promise you that. <laughs> no, <neither great>, mind. <laughs> great movie, great acting, not there. All right. Uh... Three is going to be shit. Dude, you really did put me on the fucking spot here. <laughs> Fuck you. Welcome to the show, um, my friend. <laughs> shit. Fuck you, dude. You're such a dick. (laughs) (laughs) Son of a bitch. All right, number three is going to be Revenge of the Sith. I have to go there. Really? Really? Interesting choice. Because it shows where everything truly went wrong. You know, how, how at the end of the Clone Wars, how at the end when the Jedi finally were supposed to win, finally were supposed to win, enacted a long out plan, right? And they, it it just shows, (laughs) and you gotta love Hayden Christensen and and Ian McGregor because they, at that, that last scene with them two fighting, you know, is, 
honestly astonishing. And there has, I feel like in a movie, there has not been a fight, uh, a, a fucking a fight scene, a lightsaber fight scene as well as that one where they're going, where they're just at each other because it's not only are they both really strong Jedi, but it's because they've known each other for so long. You know, they practice together, they spar together, they fought with each other, you know, their master, you know, their master and uh, Padawan, even though Luke isn't a pet Luke, Anakin isn't a Padawan anymore. Um, you know, that's still his, you know, that's the person he raised, that's the person he taught, and even, you know, even though Anakin has his own fighting style, so is Ian, they know each other's habits, they know each other's thoughts, they know each other's next move, they've, you know what I mean, they've been together for so long that they're brothers to each other and they're fighting, so the fight is so well drawn out, so well done by these two, and there's no real like good fight, like a lightsaber battle as good as that one. I feel like that one was really good. It's It's not just like swing, block, oh, you know, it's 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 showing the movements, it's showing the different lightsaber. fighting forms that the Jedi do practice because there are different forms and they and Obi-Wan and and Anakin both use two different forms but they know each other so well so it's really really good uh number two is going to be Clone Wars the show um because it shows everything in between that uh, uh, the prequel movies, it shows everything that happens with within it, you know. So like the battles that Obi Wan and Anakin have fought, and also introducing you to Anakin's Padawan Ahsoka Tano, who, by the way, is like one of the baddest fucking fucking jedis to ever exist right and the show goes all the way to order 66 so you know shows everything in between and what happened off world during order 66 and it's really good it also shows you that every jedi had their own legion of stormtroopers and like the different characteristics of these stormtroopers and the struggles that they all went through and at different phases throughout time and shows uh, how actually uh, Palpatine truly got to Anakin because he did get to Anakin way before Revenge of the Sith and everything like it was a slow drawn out plan and he built that up like it took him a long long time so and so, yeah, it shows how he, yeah. So there's that. Uh, and then, number one, just like you, it has to be The Empire Strikes. And That's the I one, dude. Let me explain that one. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Luke, I am oh, your father. Oh, by the way, actually, I'm going to change something up. I'm going to push uh, the Bad Batch to number five. I'm taking out Rebels because that's number six. Uh, And then I'm pushing back the uh, Revenge of the Sith to four. And and then I'm putting the Mandalorian in spot number three. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. Because the Mandalorian's fire. They did so well with it. The writing, the lore, the callbacks to a lot of certain things. It's really good. Uh, And just the characters that they built. Also, season three is fucking fantastic. Fuck off to all the haters. Dude, do you remember when we tried watching Mandalorian when you came out here to visit for me on my birthday? Like when Mandalorian dropped and you you had Disney Plus through Verizon or whatever. I remember everyone was watching it and it kept crashing. We were like, no, cast cast the Apple TV and it kept crashing. And everyone oh, was dude, watching Mandalorian, was dude. So and we kept, we kept crashing, not buffering because everyone was watching it. We were like, dude, like, why is it not playing? And it was like Twitter was like, uh, Disney Plus is 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 like is not working because the shows came out. Like we tr- dude, I remember we tried like everyone so was watching it, dude. Everyone, everyone was watching we like, it. No. And it kept crashing. I was like, no. Fucking no, son of a but bitch. Like, no. 
Um, good uh, list, yeah. It's a very good list. I, I was a very, I like how unique that list was. It wasn't like a, you know, like, oh, look at Rogue One's the best movie, or Lord Shane was the best movie. I like that. It was very, like, Fuck very unique. No, like, I like Rogue, that. Rogue One is really good. It is. It's really good. It was to me an unnecessary fucking movie because I never gave a fuck. I never been like, yeah, I oh my either. god, I wonder what they went through to get the fucking plans for the Death Star. Like no one asked that, but everyone asked like, like I wonder how Han Solo became Han Solo, and then hate that yeah. beloved Rogue One. Like come on, fuck, fuck off. But uh, no, Be no real. hate to the actors, no hate to the writers. Like it was a good movie, it really was. Me, just me, it, it wasn't a movie that I'm just going to stick by. And I haven't watched Andor because I don't really fucking care for that character. Yeah, I tried. I tried. It's it's yeah. not a show right. for me. All right. All right. So, again, so, no hate to the actors. Yeah. It's a good show. It's just, it doesn't draw. It, it, it has no draw to me. Like, most people that watch, like, the book of boba fett and like you know the clone war show and like other things like everyone has their thing so don't give us hate for our our likes or dislikes you know you have your own opinion we have our own opinions this podcast is all about opinions without judgment you know what i mean and we're just expressing that our opinion of what we truly like on may the 4th for star wars all, all film and TV is subject is sub, is uh, subjective, man. It's the beauty of film and TV that you know you can like what you like and, and like you, and don't like what you don't like. It's a, it's a beauty of it, and I think we, I think we, I mean, when we established the show, the first few episodes, all, I, we all said was you know that's the beauty of entertainment is that you know you can not like something that other people like, and that's fine. You want you can have a conversation about it. It's not a big like, oh, you're wrong. You didn't like this movie. Da, da, da. And I feel like that's very, I've been, the, I think you and I have both been in those circles where it's like, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. It's like, no, we're not wrong. We just didn't like it more than you did. And that's fine. And like, again, if someone hates your favorite movie, it is what it is. It, it, it's their opinion. And I do feel like a lot of people don't appreciate other people's opinions as much. I mean, in general, but also with film and TV, especially. But you're right. This show is all about hearing our opinions. You don't like, you don't like it. But we're, we're all just film geeks and TV nerds. I just want to talk about our opinions. And it's a beauty of discussing film and TV. Because you know what? All film and TV is subjective. And you can like what you like and, like, and hate what you hate. I said it. Um, um, all right. So for me, I it's tough. For number five, it's, a t- it's kind of a really close tie between Mandalorian and Solo. So I really love Solo. And I really do like... All the cats. I love Woody Harrelson. I love Amelia Clark. I love Fendi Newton. I love, I love Donald Glover as young Lando. That was just perfect casting, and I love the whole dynamic between the whole cast and uh, Chewie and Han. And I think that movie gets a lot of hate for, like said, no, no apparent reason. Um, and I love the movie so much, and I still push my heart that you know Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who've done some amazing things like Twenty One Jump Street, Twenty Two Jump Street, Lego Movie, Spider Verse. Uh, the after party, they, uh, Cloudy with Chance of Meatballs. They, they, they are so creative and they're so like very quick and witty. They're very, very funny dudes. And I'm so bummed that they were pulled off the movie 85% done and they got like their credit was like a special thing. So, like, executive producer. And I'm like, y'all should have let them finish their movie because mm-hmm. it really, they're just so creative. And I, I love hearing them on podcasts. They're so passionate about their storytelling and who they pick as their characters and it shows all their projects. I mean, look, they, they won an, they won an Oscar. They won an Oscar the same year solo came out for spider verse. And again, this is why I have a problem with Kevin Kennedy. You got to trust your filmmakers. These dudes won an Oscar for a fantastic Spider-Man animated movie that has so much heart and so much, so much passion in it. And they made two of the best comedies in the past 10 years with the jump street movies. And you, and you fire these guys almost own production and these guys hired Gambino. They hired Alden Aaron, they hired the cast. They had such a great thing going. And again, Kathleen Kennedy fired them and created differences. We don't know. But you want, I give these guys respect. They they have I mean that from that I mean behind closed doors maybe, but on podcasts, on shows I've seen them in, they have never said anything hateful or like, oh man, fuck Star Wars or fuck Kathleen Kennedy. Like, no, they were like, you know what? We walked away from it. We were we were let go. It is what it is. We have no hard feelings, and that's very 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 smart of them. That's like, oh man, f this franchise. It is what it is. And guess what? They won an Oscar the same year as Solo did. So good on them. Get up again. I'm really impressed with these guys. Um, but I think Mandalorian might be number five because I feel like, like you said, two covered pretty well. It's you know 
I, when that came out, because it was the first Disney Plus thing to be released, again, we were in my apartment 2019 in November when that dropped, and we were like, oh my god, we can't wait, we can't wait. And, you know, Pedro Pascal wasn't really a household name. I mean, he was a lot of things that we've seen, but we did, like no one really knew who he was. I think that, I think that show definitely put him on the map. When, you know, Last of Us kind of, like, elevated his career. But Mandalorian, for sure, like, I just, it's... That first episode is why you love Star Wars. And I think yeah. John Favreau, Dave Filoni, and I love that they brought in people like Taco with TT and Bryce Dallas Howard, and they brought in Rick from Moya uh, to really have kind of shepherd this series. And I'm still watching season three now, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. But those first two seasons are just perfect Star Wars. You have um, mm-hmm. Juan Carlos Esposito from you know Breaking Bad. He's a phenomenal actor. He's such a good villain. He's such a good villain. And I he do is. love um, Katie Sackhoff as Bo-Katan. I love... Um... Oh, man. Uh, there's this... Hold on, I'm sorry. There's this, there's this meme that was going around during the season three of uh, The Mandalorian because, you know, Bo-Katan is back in the show. And, like, yeah. you know, there's a meme where it's like, how are you going to like someone? He wears a helmet all day. And then, and then, and then it shows, like, the scenes from uh, Bo-Katan, like, walking around. And it's like... Sexy lady, and all that shit. Like the song plays, <laughs> so where you're just like, oh. because man, is she? Oh my god, uh, great oh, actress. Oh, god. Great Sorry. actress. She's a great actress. actress. Oh my god, dude. I, um, um, so, <laughs> I was one of those so, dudes like, keep the helmet on. <laughs> I um, <laughs> um. So I, I'm gonna give Mandalorian in my fifth place because I I think it's a phenomenal TV show. It's what Star Wars can be and more. Uh, great performances, great writing. And you know what? I, this is a thing I, people mention often. Season one, sorry, episode, season two, episode one. John Favreau shot that scene that shot from that episode in IMAX. And I've never seen a TV show in the IMAX ratio, IMAX aspect ratio. Mm-hmm. And that to me, I'm a big nerd. I'm a big IMAX nerd, big IMAX appreciator. That to Dude. me, I was like, Fuck yeah, John Favreau! Like hell yeah, you're, you're bringing the IMAX John, to the small screen. Hell yeah, yes. John F- John Favreau does such amazing work, you know, with what not only in Star Wars, just in everything he does, because his cre- creativity is just insane. Mm-hmm. He brings Huge. so much things to life and just does so well with his filmography, his writing, you know, the the people that he picks for these things. Like he he does really good. They do really well because like I just I love the things that he does. He's such he's so good. And the Mandalorian, he just killed it all three seasons. People might not agree with me, but all three fucking seasons are fire. I love them all. Yeah, I, I highly I tell you guys season three. to watch. Man, you better hop on it now, man, before you fucking. Before you I'm already, fucking... Uh, I'm already, I already hopped off of YouTube and Instagram. So I know they're gonna spoil Gar- it's TikTok because I know they're gonna ruin Guardians for me. I'm seeing it tomorrow, and I'm like, I don't want to. Nope. Um, but yeah, yes. man, I love, I love Mandalorian man, so by much. By the way, watch, watch the season three of Mandalorian. Don't oh, well, listen to all this shit. Hating people because that was a really no, good will. show. I will. I, I gotta walk. I gotta finish it. Um. So that's number five is Mandalorian for me. Uh. Number four. I'm gonna go with. It might. It might be kind of easy, but number four for me is Return of the Jedi. Um. Mm-hmm. I remember as a kid watching it on VHS and. Uh, Same. I like. I said it was. I remember like. And what too? I love that. You know, I think you and I joke and we, we can speak on this. Is that you know we grew up in the era of the VHS where you know the the new versions of the new of the of the older movies have been re rendered and you know have like new updated CGI and it looks very weird. It looks very very weird. It doesn't look. Yeah. It, it, it looks out of place. So if you have the original, 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 like the first original pressing copies, of, yes, cherish that, Matt. Cherish that because I, I I own the Blu rays. Yeah, I don't mind that they, you know, upped the film of it. You know what I mean? Because, like, certain things are brighter, you know, certain things aren't too dark, you know, with what they did. You know what I mean? Like, they brined some of the, you know, they, they, they crispened the the film, I guess you could say. But the CGI is just... It's you atrocious. Tried adding, yeah, it's atrocious. Bad. And that was your old CGI. Who cares? And that was what Lucas is doing. And I'm like, bro, you must. You oh, your own George. creation. 
Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so for me, it was Return of the Jedi. I remember watching it on VHS, and I was like, "Oh, this is great! I love like, I love the kind of like finale. Again, this was the finale, you know, obviously years ago. Um, and I love that. Um, the ve- it's a very, it's a very fun movie. It's why you love Star Wars. It's a very kind of action adventure. Um, it's a lot, again with the the green saber of Luke, and just like the whole dynamic between you know the rest of the cast and. You see Jabba the Hutt, and you know, see uh, the, the iconic Princess Leia um, prisoner outfit, um, and it's a very, it's a, very, it's, a, it's a fun movie. It's a very fun movie, and I'm bummed I couldn't go see it in the you know uh, 40th anniversary release this weekend. I was traveling, so I missed out on mm-hmm. that. So I was like, damn, that would have been really cool to see. And again, the, the John Williams score is fantastic. Um, it's a very fun movie, and I remember watching that a lot. You know, this, this was good, and like I said, if you really have, if you have the original pressing, whether it's the original DVD or the original VHS, cherish that. You know, the CGI on that, it's the, it's the old practical stuff, and it looks fantastic. Because like I said, I own the updated Blu-rays, uh, you know, the recent Blu-rays, and they just don't look as good. And I, I'm, I'm proud to own those movies in my collection, but to me, I'm just like, y'all should have kept the original because it's, it's such, it's such a iconic, you know, first few movies because this is like when. You know when technology was enhanced, was you know it was being you know like improved on, and it was like kind of like eighties was kind of like you know I love back every movie, every movie is Back to the Future, and if they kind of redid it today. I'd be like, ew, hell no! Like why did we do this? Then but they'll do the Lorian or anything, so it looked kind of weird. So I love the original pressing of the of the movies. Uh, number three, man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Force Awakens. Like I said, yeah, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Uh, Force Awakens was uh, an experience like no other. I just again, I, I saw this movie with. Joel, so I was moving with our friend Sebastian and our uh, other friend TJ, um, our high school friend TJ, and you know he, we just, I remember being so excited for this movie. We were like, we, I remember we like, we all got tickets in advance. I was like, yo, I'm, I, I, remember, I remember getting AMC gift cards for my birthday that year, and I said, yo, I got y'all. Let's get tickets now, a month before it comes out. And I, we, we had never in our life, you know, this is before a science meeting was kind of a huge thing in Chicago. I remember like yeah. using all my AMC gift cards. Yo guys, let's go do it. And we booked tickets in advance. And I was so like, I was so hyped. It was a good thing we did. Star Wars. Yeah, thank, thank God we did too. I, and yeah. I, I, I could, we couldn't wait. Thank God. Thank God. Um, I, I, we couldn't wait for we were like, yo, we have so Star Wars. We, we, we had like a whole like calendar. Like any movie that mm-hmm. came out between Thanksgiving that year and Star Wars didn't matter to us. I don't care what it was. We were like, you know, it's, it's, Star, it's Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. We can't wait for this. You know, we're, we're counting down the days. Like, oh my God, we can't wait for this. And I remember that seeing that opening night with you guys was a very special moment to me because I'm like, wait, I'm also, this is my last kind of like few months before I was moving to Arizona. So it was like, oh, this is going to be a lot. It's awesome to see the Star Wars together. And like I said, opening night to me, opening night for a movie like that or like a Spider-Man or whatever, it's the, the energy is so unmatched. And it's like everyone in that theater was so excited whether they hated the movie or not afterwards, that everyone was so hyped to be in a, in a movie theater, in a Star Wars movie especially, a pre a, a sequel too to, to the original trilogy, like, what's going to happen? I remember, like, being seated with you guys, we were like, we had, we had great seats, we are like, oh, cool, we made it in time, we, I remember we, I remember the bus broke down on the way to the theater, and we all, we ran, and we ran to, we all ran to the, um, there, was, there was a protest happening in the city too. An and unnecessary like, run, by the way. They no, even <laughs> start. Uh, they is <laughs> fucking. I'm. I look. I'm not. Uh, back then, I wasn't this fat, right? I was actually pretty in good, pretty in good shape for my size at that time. Like I was healthy kid, but like fuck me, did I not want to run? And I had to run. And I'm telling them like we don't need to run, and we ran. Because we did, because we didn't make it a neck of time, luckily. And luckily, we, we, we had good seating. Um, no, but I remember, like, yeah. there, there was a protest going on. Our bus broke down. We're like, fuck. We're, like, kind of, like, blocks away. I remember we kind of, like, we hustled I up to the theater. Everyone, and... We did not need to run. Though. We really <laughs> didn't. Because we still would have got good seats. Because, yeah, um, it was just... <laughs> good times um so anyway we're going to that theater i remember sitting next to you guys in the middle of you guys and we're like oh my god we can't wait like, what's gonna happen whatever and the lights go down and you see you see on the screen um uh yeah uh, you you see uh a long time ago and it got to you far far away and i'm like i go like goosebumps or whatever and it goes dun, dun, dun. And i remember i remember tj and sebastian humming the singing the theme and joel was like Oh God! <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, "Oh, they're singing, they're singing, aren't they?" And I was like, "Yes." And you go, "Of course they are." Um, <laughs> it was just funny. And then like, 
I, I remember when like, you know, episode seven, Force Awakens, and everyone, like, everyone, was, everyone was clapping, people were standing up, like, like being on a rock concert, like, oh my god, like, Star Wars. And I remember, like, re- reading, like, the opening crawl, like, yo, Luke Skywalker has vanished or whatever. And when it ended, me and Joel were like, fuck, that, that was a great crawl. I'm so into this. Because you, know, you, know, you don't know what Star Wars movies are like before you go into the, before you see the crawl. And you and I were just like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, that, that was a great opening crawl. And just that to me, that movie was just very special to me. I was so excited to be with you guys. And I just, it just, the, the introduction to a new generation, seeing Han Solo, seeing, you know, Carrie Fit, seeing uh, Princess Leia, seeing Luke Skywalker, seeing, yeah, R2D2, CP3, C3PO, and Chewbacca back. It just, it was, very, it, was, it was nostalgia done right while introducing a new era of characters in a storyline. And because this was part one of the new trilogy before we knew about Last Jedi and, for, and Rise of Skywalker. And it was so exciting to see this great movie. Again, we're all big DJ, big DJ Abrams friends from, you know, Super 8, Mission Impossible, Star Trek, um, and Lost. So it was just really fun seeing that movie. And again, I, I cherish that movie a lot because it was so much fun. The visuals were amazing. It was just, again, like I said, we were so hyped at the time because we were like, wow, we're seeing a Jedi turn, I was like, a Stormtrooper turn Jedi. We're seeing new characters. We're seeing Kylo Ren. We're seeing like, oh, like, he's the son of, again, spoilers, it's been a couple years now. He's the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia and... You said Snoke, who was Snoke, whatever. And it was such a great first movie to a fort to an unfortunate eh, trilogy. And I just love I, I watched it all, I, when I watched it again and again. I just I feel so excited to see like, oh yeah, like the lightsaber fights. And there's a great scene where like Finn's fighting a stormtrooper when the traitor scene going on. And there's no music. It is them fighting and it's perfect. And it's such a great script and it's such a good good music and the uh, the sound the sound design is perfect. Cinematography is beautiful. It's a very, very great Star Wars movie. It's why you love Star Wars, and it's unfortunate that set that eight and nine couldn't couldn't follow how amazing that was. So, again, to all the haters are saying, "Oh, it's basically it's basically a New Hope all over again." It's very similar. Yes, it's very similar. But to what Duel said earlier too, it's introducing, it's bringing back Star Wars. It's reintroducing you to who Star Wars is and bringing a new bunch of characters to the big screen. So, um, I just I love that movie so much. And for two, I'm gonna go with the original. Obviously, uh, the first movie started off, which is A New Hope. I remember watching that movie as a kid with my parents, with my dad on VHS as well. And I was just like, wow! I was just mesmerized. Ken, how I was mesmerized with like you know Back to the Future and movies of that era. It was just like, wow! Like this is what movie. This is the magic of movie making. This is why we fall in love with movies. This is why you know movies make us feel bigger than larger than life and make us feel like you know like movies kind of like in a way raise you of like yeah like this is like this is like this is how imagination can go so far this is the beauty of imagination if you put your mind to it like you know you can create worlds i think it's a very first star wars is a very inspiring tale of what you can do with imagination and you know you know, with sci-fi and fantasy and you know i if, if i had a time machine you know from the Delor- the old delorean time machine i would go back in time and watch that movie the, for the first time not on vhs but like go back in time and watch it in theaters because i feel like that would have been such a cool experience to like be in line not knowing what this is, what's going on here, and just like, kind of just being blown away. So I'm um, definitely going with uh, A New Hope for my second choice. And my first, like Joel 2, was Empire Strikes Back. I had that on VHS. It was a really cool VHS of Darth Vader's uh, mask just staring at you. It was very haunting at some time when you were a kid. I just love that. The, you know, we opened up on the, on the ice planet. Uh, yeah, Luke, I am your father. It's so iconic because it's kind of like the birth of like a great blockbuster twist of like guess what he's your father and like, oh my gosh and i remember as a kid i was like no way like no no way he's, he's the father he, he's luke's father and it's just everything about the movie is just effing awesome you meet lando for the first time by the play, play by the charming billy d williams um i think as gambino said in an interview the first black dude in space and i love that because it's like he's such a cool lando's such a cool character he's very cool he's very suave he just like you love him too i mean it's just that movie to me works on so many ways. The great battle between Luke and um, and Darth Vader. It's a great, great movie. And I just, that is like the epitome of Star Wars when you watch it of like, this is just what, A, a fantastic sequel, a fantastic sequel to like, kind of like the show, like sequels can be this good if they if they do try and, you know, put their, put effort and heart into it. And not be lazy with it, and it just it just again it is really the epitome of a blockbuster, and why we love Star Wars, and why we love why we love a good sequel, and why we love a good villain, and a great 
you know, dynamic between the characters and the the good guy, bad guy, like the perfect trouble, good guy, bad guy. So Empire Strikes Back to me, is just, it's, just, it's a, honestly a near perfect movie. If not, if not a perfect movie, it's a perfect Star Wars movie. And, you know, to this day, I remember, I remember hearing our interview one time, like, oh, Last Jedi is the next, is the next um, uh, Empire Strikes Back. And I'm like, no, it's not. Far from it. Far from it in a galaxy, not from this galaxy. So I don't, I don't see that whatsoever in like comparison. But Empire Strikes Back to me is literally what Star Wars is to me. And I don't think any movie can come close to it. I mean, Force Awakens is definitely up there. But... I don't think that uh, nothing will ever top Empire Strikes Back. So, like I said, Empire Strikes Back is my first. New Hope was my second. Third is Force Awakens. Four is, what did I say? Four was um, Turn of the Jedi. And five was Mandalorian. And again, honorable mention for me is definitely um, Solo. And like I said, Solo is a great movie. It's so much fun. It's a great summer blockbuster. It's a popcorn movie. The casting's fantastic. Everyone brings their A game. Again, I'm a huge Donald Glover, Charles Gambino fan, so it works for me on so many different levels, and I, I love that movie so much. So, to all the haters, it's a great movie. I know it's unfortunate that movie flopped really hard at the box office. I think that was piss poor marketing, and also bad timing on Disney's part. I think they should have waited because you released that movie shortly after Last Jedi, and Last Jedi had everyone in distraught and very torn. If I was them, I would have waited longer. If not Christmas, maybe a little bit later in the summer. It was too soon, so it's unfortunate. But I do have a special place in my heart for um, for Solo, which is a very, very good Star Wars movie. And yeah, man, that's. I need to finish season three of Mandalorian when I have a chance to. That was that was a good list, man. It was real good. Yeah, Fucks with it. Uh, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, man. I mean, so, uh, you know, like I said, I I think we're both looking forward to seeing what they're gonna bring. I again, I, I heard rumor that Kathleen Kennedy might be getting out after Indiana Jones. You know, I know it's I know most of Star Wars is still Lucas film, but I'm I'm very 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 nervous about Indiana Jones the next month because uh, Crystal Skull was a big letdown, and this is the mm-hmm. first Disney produced Indiana Jones. I'm um, just very. I love James Mangold was doing it. Who did again? Who did Ford vs Ferrari? Three ten to Yuma Logan. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal director. I, I have so much faith in him. I just don't know if Disney can pull off a great finale. At Indiana Jones. I'm worried. I love Harrison. I love the director, writer, love the, uh, cast and crew. But please, 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 please don't let me down. And apparently Spielberg saw it last week and he was like he effing praise it i'm like okay if spielberg praises mm-hmm. this movie that's reassuring to me but at the same time i'm just like you, you said too early in the show joe that either way the fandom of this franchise is going to also be right present with indiana jones as well and i'm worried about that because no matter what happens people are going to be pissed but i'm going in with an open mind i hope that they can deliver because again indiana jones is very special to me and my family and my my childhood Please, please don't mess this up. I can't wait to watch it. Can't wait, can't wait to review it on the show with you guys. Please, Lucasfilm and Disney. Please don't mess up Indiana Jones for me. <laughs> I'll, I can't, the heartbreak to me would be too devastating for me. I, I definitely would cry a lot. So I'm looking forward to it. June 30th can't come soon enough. If I go to a screening of it, I'm going to be so excited. If not, I'll be there opening day Two with my family. Two days after my sure. birthday. Please, please, for Joel's birthday, Disney and Lucasfilm, do not mess up Indiana Jones for <laughs> I beg of you, please, please. This is like Harrison Ford's last you're, like, big you're, action movie. You're, you're asking the wrong thing, as I have I know, hated dude. on Disney throughout this whole entire fucking podcast. No, you have. No, you have. <laughs> you're I'm, asking I'm them to a, do a favor for someone I'm on my knees not, begging you, please. Uh, <laughs> you should have never said it was for me. You fucked up. <laughs> I know. That, that's going to be some. That, that's not going to be worse than Crystal Skull. I'm going to be like, well, I asked for, for it. <laughs> But please, um, uh, yeah, man. I, I love I love how people talk about Crystal Star nowadays. Where it's like that Indiana Jones was not needed. Oh, because they all would have died anyways. Oh yeah, too. That too. And also, again, you know, you know who scrapped everything before production? George Lucas. And I'm like, oh, apparently the original script of that Crystal Skull was like amazing. Like it was like, one of the best scripts ever. And I said that George Lucas said, nope. Not my Indiana Jones, and rewrote everything. And I'm like, bro, 
come on, dog. And I, and I just heard that he just was obsessed with aliens and that he wanted that to be the, 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 the story or whatever. And again, I, if, if I can find the original script to Indiana Jones Crystal Skull, I will read it, pro- read it, definitely read it. But it sucks that um, that we got, got that. And I, and I love Shia LaBeouf, too. I mean, I'm fortunate that like, he, he, won't be, he won't be returning to this franchise, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, movie is not... That was a movie I remember as a kid watching with my parents in theaters. And I've never seen them like react to that movie before. To a movie like that before, we walked out, oh, and my both my parents were like, "That movie sucked." And as a kid, I was like, <laughs> "Damn!" I've never seen my parents have that kind of like reaction to a movie like that before. And I was like, "Wow!" My parents were like, "Hell no!" They were like, and they're big Indiana Jones fans too, and they were like, "Oh hell no!" And I'm like, "Oh wow!" My parents didn't like that movie. That's not a good sign, but. Uh, here's hope for the new one, man. I, I'm, I'm hoping that yes. Dial Destiny can deliver and bring us back while we love Nina Jones. And I can, t- I can hopefully pr- Lucasfilm can prove us wrong, but don't have high hopes, unfortunately. But I love Nina Jones. Hopes. I love Harrison Ford. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, man. All right, man. What's, you want to do our, my friend, you want to do our one on ones of the week? Actually, before we end it, I thought we can do what you wanted to do from the beginning and talk about one more topic that isn't Star Wars. Uh, I think we're we, saving for next week the summer movie watch week? list. Yeah, I'm, okay. uh, we'll save it for next week. I want, I want to dive more into for a full episode. I want to dive into like, like a whole, the okay. whole episode. Um, so I, right. I, we have a lot to talk about for that for that episode, and um, mm-hmm. um, I, we have a lot to talk about. For that, that for that topic, but um, we'll definitely do it next week. So I know that can like, be a good conversation to have about like what's coming out and what we're headed for, and what we're next headed for. I feel like you and I definitely have a lot of opinions on the uh, upcoming movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I got you. Um, one and ones. Okay. You want to spend with, with, with the air? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Uh, our one in ones. Uh, I started this first. It started has two shows, two movies, but I decided to lessen it so we don't, you know, fucking stress our brains out, <laughs> and then we can have stuff every week. Uh, is uh, so our one in ones is uh, one TV show and one movie that me and Doug feel that is underappreciated, underrated, or just overall just needs to be seen or watched. And, you know, we'll tell you what they are and the reasons why we like them and, you know, about about them a tiny bit without spoiling anything too much. And, uh, and you know, we just hope that you at least put it onto your watch list on whatever apps or phone app you may have or whatever streaming service you have, you know, hopefully you add to your list and, you know, some point in the future, even if it's not close within down the road that you will pick that movie out or show out and give it a good watch. And uh, yeah, that is our one in ones. Uh, I guess I'll start this week. So I'm pretty sure yes, you sir. started last week, right? Uh, okay. Uh, since it's Star Wars, I'm going to go with a Star Wars show. It is the Clone Wars, all seasons. And I'm pretty sure I've probably talked about this before. But if you are a Star Wars fan that has no interest in going around trying to figure out the uh, the the uh, if you if you if you want to find out about the lore, history, and like a lot of things that happen within the Star Wars universe, um, the Clone Wars is really good. Uh, it talks about everything that happened during the Clone Wars. You know, Anakin becoming a master and training Ahsoka Tano, and everything that led to to the fall of the Jedi, but also just these characters of how they became who they were. And it really does expand on this in uh, the universe. So, like a lot of things that are in the movie, they talk about within the movie, uh, talk about within the show, and just overall, it's really good. A lot of characters that you would not expect, and it expands more on a lot of characters, such as Darth Maul, um, obviously who lived. Uh, so definitely give that a watch. It's a really good show, and the final two episodes in the final season 
fucking masterpieces because I have not seen animation in that show like that in ever, and they fucking killed it. And you all understand why Soka Tano is so important and her character is so fucking fire and one of the best je- best Jedi's, in my personal belief, one of the best Jedi's to have ever lived. Anyways, that is that one. Uh, and then I'm gonna say for my movie is definitely the solo movie. It's uh the prequel. I you know it's uh it's not prequel. It's it's uh the the story of Han Solo. Everyone asks, how did Han Solo become Han Solo? How did he get the Millennium Falcon? They have such good right such good actors in it, like Donald Glover and so on and so forth. And it's just overall such a good movie and explains everything really well. It probably would have came out different if they never got rid of directors for it but overall it's a really good movie and i highly suggest you guys give it a watch as a star wars lover i do think uh, it's a great movie and you guys should give it another chance yeah that's my one and ones your turn dig i love i love that you uh get the star wars theme actually that's 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 very impressive um Uh, I'm going to go a little bit of a different route and go Star Trek. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Wrong show. Um, <laughs> the best. Yo, what? The, wrong, <laughs> why wrong franchise. The best Star Wars? Star Trek. <laughs> Just yeah, start you know a whole actually, argument in our like, comments. Yeah, oh, dude. We, oh, my God. You don't understand, man. Oh, God. I'm, 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 waiting, for, I'm waiting for those comments yet again. I'm not going to post anything on TikTok for a week. I'm like, oh, I, like uh, I, I, I look, Star Trek, interesting oh, universe. Man. Personally, not a fan. That's all dark and news family. But yeah. yeah. It's my dad, man. My dad is a live long and prosper kind of guy. Live, He's uh, a Trekkie. Right. He's a Trekkie, man, for sure. <laughs> I think my funny story before actually before I do my one on ones. I love that when when I moved. So again, as you probably heard in the other episodes, we get I me and Joel's mom. We get early screenings. Go see these movies a bunch of early, early, a few weeks early, a few days early, a few months early. Um, we're trying to get on the press list because uh, the show has been doing really num- good numbers. We're trying to get on the press list for like upcoming shows, upcoming movies. Facts. Um, and I will so, be back in Chicago. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at bigger, those pre screenings, uh, and you guys you, will actually guy. see my face. Instagram and TikTok <laughs> giving these reviews. Do I want to do show my face? Absolutely not. But I just said fuck it at this point. So, but <laughs> you, I will be doing reviews. You guys will be seeing them on our Instagram and TikTok. So keep a lookout for that. And I will be going in free screen. So if you guys go pre screens in Chicago and come out, you might see me. I'd love to talk to you guys about the podcast and other things. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Um, so actually so when I moved to Arizona, I, um, I saw, so I changed, I, I changed my like kind of location to get the pre-screenings in Arizona now. I was like, cool. You know, I didn't know the area as much, but I wanted to go to like screenings down near Scoot, near ASU. It was, it was before I started college. I was at my parents' house, um, here, out here in Phoenix. And, you know, um, I had a few actually, but I was like, you know, I, I don't know the area as much. I don't know like where to go, like where to drive to. So I, I got a bunch of screenings for these movies. I, I missed out, I missed out on, so I'll, I'll see them eventually, whatever. I'll, I'll go pay to go see them, whatever. Flash forward, maybe like mid July. I said, Hey, I got passes to go see Star Trek. And my dad goes, you did like he, this man, like this man stood up. He goes, Orly, where? And it's in Glendale. And right where, where, where my parents live in Arizona, Arizona currently, they, it's like a hour, almost an hour for I me, mean, 45 to an hour drive. Right. My dad, God bless him, did not hesitate. He goes, "We're going." Uh, <laughs> and, like, and again, is this how committed of a, of a Star Trek fan he is? He loves he loves the first two movies, the first two JJ ones a lot. This, this is how big of a fan he is. We literally drove an hour to see Star Trek at an early screening. Yes, it was worth it. But it was like I've never seen my dad more committed to going to a screening before than that movie. He was, "We're going to this movie. We're going to drive. Let's go." And again, we didn't we didn't really know the area that well. I remember we drove to Glendale. It was AMC, and I don't know, like, it, was, it was like our first screening in Arizona. Like, oh, it's gonna be crazy. And what I didn't know because in Chicago it was all on your phone. And we got, to, we got to the theater, and the guy was like, "Oh, you need paper passes." And this is before COVID, so we, so my dad and I were like, "Oh shit!" And the guy was like, "Well, it's okay. You can wait in line." And I tell you what, like everyone had like Star Trek stuff on. It was really cool. We got we got we got in fine. We had seats, whatever. And they they did like a whole they did like a whole Star Trek uh, like uh, trivia before the screening. The the people that were hosting the screening had you know like the, the red and blue and or and uh, gold like you know um, 
uh, uniforms on, whatever, and the trivia. And my dad, I hope it doesn't mind, mind me telling the story. He like they ask questions, people raising their hands, people people raising their hands, and no, and he was answering. But this man knew every answer. <laughs> I'm like, Pop, you should answer the question. He goes, No, I'm good, good, good. Like they they would ask a question, and he was he was for me. Uh, Enterprise, whatever. And I'm like, Dad. He goes, be up because no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> he was just like, it was so funny because he was just like, no, I, I'm here, but I'm I'm not gonna participate in the in the in the uh, in the games. But uh, he knew literally every 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 um, question to the trivia. I was very impressed with him because he he knew his shit. Um, the very fond memory I have of my dad and I when we went to the, our first screening in Arizona. But anyway, so yeah, one on one, the one on one of the week for me. Uh, for my movie, I'm going to go with a movie I think it's very underrated and it's very funny because it's very kind of in line with uh, both Star Wars and Star Trek. It's called a movie called Fanboys. No one saw this movie. No one saw this movie. Like this movie has probably not seen a lot of day in a long time. It's a very very funny movie. It's about these guys in I think it was 1999. Yeah, it was right before Episode One was coming out. Like these guys are the biggest biggest. Biggest Star Trek, uh, star, sorry, Star Wars fans ever. They, 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 they live in their mom's garage. They like, live in their parents' basements, whatever. They're kind of like adult geeks who never kind of like, you know, got anywhere in life at post high school, whatever. Never went to college, or whatever. And they're this huge Star Wars family. They worship Star Wars. They worship George Lucas. And they find out that one of their friends is dying of cancer. Uh, and he won't make it until he won't make it in time for the release of uh, Phantom Menace. This is before we all knew Phantom Menace was a piece of shit uh, um so they trek from i think they're in detroit whatever they're in detroit to san fran to go to um lucas ranch whatever uh, lucas film Ra- lucas ranch whatever and like so many shenanigans go on they run into like they run into like uh pimps and hookers um um and like um star- like, angry star trek fans and angry angry fans and so many good cameos are from like uh billy d williams carrie fisher um uh I'm trying to, th- um, who else? Uh, Jay Unsell and Bob, Kevin Smith and Jay Mews, uh, Seth Rogen's in it, and a lot of different characters. It's a very, very odd movie, but it's really funny. There's a lot of heart to it. Because like no one saw this movie. It has uh, Dan Fogler from uh, the uh, Fantastic Beasts movie, uh, Jay Baruchel from you know, How to Train Your Dragon, This is the End. Um, she's out of my league, knocked up. Uh, and then bunch of unknown actors, uh, but like there's a gr- so many great cameos. And if you're a Star Trek Star Wars fan, I highly recommend this movie. It's so funny, it has so much heart, and it's extremely underrated. Um, and again, it's the, it's the guy, um, the guy who wrote it is the author of uh, Ready Player One, who actually, who actually wrote the screenplay for the for the for fanboys. And it's again very charming. Craig Robinson's in it. Uh, Will Forte's in it. It's a very, very charming movie. Again, low, super, super low budget. It came out like oh eight, oh nine. No one saw it. I watched it on my iPad one day. I love this movie so much because it's very, it's very charming. If you're like a geek like how we are, you'll appreciate it. It's a very funny movie. Again, like, again very charming. Kristen, Kristen Bell's in it. You know, uh, Elsa from uh, Frozen, um, and uh, you know, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's a very, very funny movie. I highly recommend it. Uh, you can watch it on Amazon Prime actually, which is great, or the Roku channel or Tubi. Okay, it came out at oh, came out at oh, oh nine, hour and a half. It's a very quick movie. I I, I own it on Blu Ray. It's a very very funny movie. I again, if you're a Star Trek, Star Wars, and kind of like franchise fan, it's super funny. It's very charming. I hope you like it. And for my show this week, I'm gonna go with a show that I think is also very underrated. It's a show called Undeclared, and it's kind of like in the vein of Freaks and Geeks, and uh, you know, same kind of writers. Judd Apatow is a part of it. Uh, Paul Fig part of it, part of it. Young Jay, young uh, Jay Baruchel, young Seth Rogen, um, your boy uh, from uh, Sons of Anarchy, uh, Charlie Hunnam. The thing, Charlie Hunnam, who was a uh, gentleman and uh, Sons of Anarchy and King Arthur, or whatever. Great actor. Um, it's about kind of like very. It's early two thousands. You know, the first your first semester of college. You know, like people you meet, the people you room with, the people uh, you get you get, you get to know, and like your first time, um, like kind of unsupervised and like living in your own, living on your own for the first time. And it's getting same writers, same producers as you know, Freaks and Geeks. Judd Apatow is one of the writers, creators of the show, and it's very funny because it's if you like Freaks and Geeks like I do, it's very similar kind of in the vein of that. It's very quirky, it's very goofy, it's very early two thousand. A lot of good cameos from like Will Ferrell and Adam Sandler, a lot of big stars, a lot of stars who are who are big today. And it's very funny. It's also very charming. Like I said, it's very like kind of like the era of like you know, cell you know, cell phones are new. 
internet's very kind of young and very new as well. Very 2000 soundtrack with like kind of uh, punk rock and and um, hip hop and um, rock and roll. Um, it is fun. it's very fun. It's, a, it's only one season, unfortunately, too. Kind of kind of it's kind of the same fate as Freaks and Geeks at one season, and then never saw it again. Unfortunately, no, there's like no uh, like no kind of like season two, no kind of resurgence. Um, so kind of like it's kind of like a the cousin of Freaks and Geeks, where it's like, yeah, something happened to them. Both both were canceled way too early. Same kind of crew, same kind of cast, same kind of writers. It's very funny. It's, again, if you went to college, if you or if you just know about college in general, it's a very it's very relatable. It's very grounded. Super good humor. But you can't watch it anywhere. But, but I think YouTube. It's very strange. I think you can. I think you maybe you can buy the episodes or buy the seasons on like iTunes or Amazon Prime. But I don't think you can rent it anywhere. I remember watching it in college on like YouTube. Like someone uploaded the entire like season on YouTube. I watched the episode on YouTube because like that was the only way you could watch it. Um, yeah, I'm looking right now. Let's see. Yeah, you can. It's funny. You can only buy it on you can only buy it on Amazon Prime, which is crazy. Um, but I'm gonna check they have it on YouTube. I watched the entire season on YouTube. Um, let me see if they still have it on there. You know what? They sh- you know what? I'm happy. They have the entire season one, full episodes and all on YouTube. If you, if you if you don't mind the ads, the constant ads on YouTube. They're all in there. Um, I highly recommend it. It's, it's how I watched it on. It's how I watched it myself. Great show, very underrated. Um, very young, very young Seth Rogen, young Jay Baruchel, Jason Siegel, uh, Charlie Hunnam. Um, it's I love that movie. I love that show. And it's only I am so yeah. It's yeah, similar to similar to Freezing Geeks. It's seventeen episodes. Super funny. Well, again, Kevin Hart's in it for a few episodes. Um, like I said it's it's unfortunate that these two shows are so original and so funny and so relatable. Just never got the light of day. Um, great writers on the show, so yeah. So my show this week's undeclared. Uh, again, early two thousands, super funny, and I hope you check it out on YouTube because the only way you can watch it is on YouTube, or you got to buy the entire season on Amazon Prime. So uh, choice is yours. But yep, for my movie this week was Fanboys, and for my show, undeclared. I hope you enjoyed that. Nice selection, nice selection, yes, sir. Um, yeah, dude. I I, I know you and I both are fans of Charlie Hunnam. It's funny seeing him like pre, like Sons of Anarchy, pre, you know, um, (laughs) pre, uh, you know, King Arthur and Gentlemen. Because like he's a very kind of like already kind of like surfer Australian kind of dude or English kind of dude. He's very charming. Yeah, (laughs) I watched the gentleman. So you like it, but no. uh, I watched the gentleman not too long ago, like a few weeks so ago. Good, I dude. Love that movie. It's so oh, good. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good, dude. It's <laughs> it's one of the guy Richie's probably best movies done in a while. It's oh dude. Yeah. It's so good, dude. I, I hope more people watch it. It's gentleman. so great. Yeah. Um it, yeah, it, it, you, it you close it out, my friend. Do you want me to? Uh yeah, I can close it out. <clears throat> what was yours, my friend? You can follow us on Instagram at the Midway Avenue Production. We have a link tree there that leaves uh, all our other podcasts that you may want to listen to us on, whether it's uh, Spotify, Google, Apple, whatever you want, whatever you want to listen to, you can find the links there. Uh, you can also find the link to my Instagram, which is the OG Cuban Rican, which is for my uh, Twitch streaming channel because I do stream video games. So I would love for you guys to join the Twitch as well. It's also in the link tree. Um, yeah, I would love for you guys to stop by, talk to me about movie shows or just anything in general, and just help me grow that as well. Uh, uh, right, it also links to our TikTok and our official website uh, that we do need to work on and put more reviews on. Um, but we will get to that eventually as well. Uh, Doug, what is uh, your uh, info? Do you want to put? Do you want to plug of your course. personal uh, Instagram or anything like that? Of course, you can follow me on Instagram at the Young Jones. Uh, Twitter is at Capri underscore Sun, like the juice box. Uh, if you want to email the show and you're getting con- you get any inquiries, business inquiries, or, or you want to be on the show, you can DM us at on Instagram at, at Midway Mid- Avenue Productions, or you can email us at Midway Avenue Productions at gmail.com. I'm always on there reading emails, so feel free to feel free to reach out. Yeah, so that's uh, our links. 
uh, definitely remember to hit the follow button uh, because it's great that you guys listen, that you guys do come back. We do see people coming back and listening to our show. But uh, if you really do like it, it really does help us grow our show to have you guys follow our podcast, Huge. not just on Instagram, but like also mainly on the podcast uh whatever you're listening to us on just press follow and do share us we do want to grow this into something serious and something real and we do want to get on those movie critics list so we could review movies for you guys and talk more about uh you know new movies as our podcast goes on because so it really does help so please do hit that follow button it does really really help uh, and spur us around. All right. Well, now we're closing. We're saying our goodbyes. Thank you again for coming and listening to our show. If you're new here, thank you for giving us a, a, a chance. Yeah, and if you do come back, we'll be happy to see you. And for the people that have been here, thank you for supporting us. And thank you for enjoying our content so much and hearing us ramble. You know, our auditory... Thank you for being on this journey uh, of our auditory. Fuck, I keep fucking up. Thank you for being on this auditory journey with us through our ramblings and opinions and just our love and passion for movies and TV show and the entertainment industry in general. Uh, we hope to see you again. You, uh, we are, have so much fun doing this. And so, yeah, we really do love this. This has become a passion for us as well. So, you know, to continue sharing our passion with you guys, we do hope you guys, you know, come back and uh, keep enjoying listening to us uh, ramble on and on and on. Um, we love you guys, and thank you for joining us again. Have a good night, and may the fourth be with you.